I'd like to welcome everybody to the 2012-2013 State of the Schools for the Firelands Local School District. Certainly glad to see uh, such a turnout this evening. Several uh, familiar faces in the audience, several of our faculty members, which we greatly appreciate. Before we begin, I wanted to read this quote that I found very appropriate with all the changes that are occurring uh, in public education today. It's called The Complexity of Teaching. It says, after 30 years of doing such work, I have concluded that classroom teaching is perhaps the most complex, most challenging, and most demanding, subtle, nuanced, and frightening activity that our species has ever invented. The only time a physician could have comparable complexity would be in the emergency room of a hospital during or after a natural disaster. Lee Shulman, The Wisdom of Practice. That truly describes the task that educators have been given with the new Common Core Standards, with the third grade reading guarantee, with the new park assessments, with every other thing that is coming down the pipe in education today. With that, I want to show you a brief video that talks about the changes that are occurring in education. Specifically, we are going away from rote memorization. We are moving away from you have to know your times tables, you have to memorize this, you have to memorize that. We are moving towards an era where we are going to teach our students how to be critical thinkers. With that, oh, oh, wrong way, I will go ahead and play this. There was a great study done recently of divergent thinking, published a couple of years ago. Divergent thinking isn't the same thing as creativity. I define creativity as the, the process of having original ideas that have value. Divergent thinking isn't a synonym, but it's a, an essential capacity for creativity. It's the ability to see lots of possible answers to a question, lots of possible ways of interpreting a question, uh, to think what Edward de Bono would probably call laterally, uh, to think not just in linear or convergent ways, uh, to see multiple answers, not one. So, I mean, there are tests for this. I mean, one kind of cod example would be, people might be asked to say, how many uses can you think of for a paper clip? One of those routine questions. Most people might come up with 10 or 50. People who are good at this might come up with 200. And they do that by saying, well, could the paper clip be 200 foot tall and be made out of foam rubber? You know, like, does it have to be a paper clip as we know it, Jim? You know. Um, now, the test for this, and they gave them to 1,500 people in a book called Breakpoint and Beyond. And on the protocol of the test, if you scored above a certain level, you'd be considered to be a genius at divergent thinking. Okay? So, my question to you is, what percentage of the people tested, of the 1,500, scored at genius level for divergent thinking? Now, you need to know one more thing about them. These were kindergarten children. So what do you think? What percentage of genius level? 80. 80, 80 okay. 98%. Now, the thing about this was it was a longitudinal study. So they retested the same children five years later, aged 8 to 10. What do you think? 50. They retested them again five years later, ages uh, 13 to 15. You can see a trend here, can't you? <laughs> Now, this tells an interesting story, because you could have imagined it going the other way, couldn't you? You start off not being very good, but you get better as you get older. But this shows two things. One is, we all have this capacity. And two, it mostly deteriorates. Now, a lot of things have happened to these kids as they've grown up. A lot. But one of the most important things that happened to them, I'm convinced, is that by now, they've become educated. You know, they've spent 10 years at school being told there's one answer, it's at the back. And don't look. And don't copy, because that's cheating. I mean, outside schools, that's called collaboration. You know, but inside schools. Now, this isn't because teachers want it this way. It's just because it happens that way. Um, it's because it's in the gene pool of education. We have to think differently about human capacity. We have to get over this old conception of academic, non-academic, abstract, theoretical, vocational, uh, and see it for what it is, um, a myth, 
Uh, secondly, we have to recognize that most great learning happens in groups, that collaboration is the stuff of growth. If we atomize people and separate them and judge them separately, we form a kind of disjunction between them and their natural learning environment. As that short clip points out, one of the goals that we have as educators is to show our students how to be critical thinkers. The study that he spoke of shows that 98% of kindergartens test, kindergartners, I apologize, test at the genius level. What happens? What happens between kindergarten and the senior year as that number continually declines? To me, that is our fault, which means that with all of these new standards, all of the new common core concepts, the new pedagogy that we are engaging down the path of, we are going to ensure that those 98% of the students that test at that genius level continue down that path of being a genius, continue down that path of achieving every possible success that they can achieve throughout their careers. With that, our agenda for this evening, and I apologize, I didn't introduce myself at the beginning. For those of you I have not met, I'm Bob Hill, I'm the superintendent here. That may shed some light on things from my speech. But we are going to speak of several things this evening. We're going to talk about the accomplishments that we've achieved here as a district, as well as a high school, middle school, and elementary school. We'll talk about improvements in facilities that have occurred over the past year. We'll talk about our enrollment and what effect that has on our district. I will turn it over at that point to our treasurer, Mr. Brad McCracken. He will talk about our finances. We will then turn it over to Mr. Mike Von Gutten, our director of educational services. Mr. Von Gutten will talk to us about curriculum. Then we will have a brief period at the end to answer any questions that might arise throughout the presentation. So with that, we've accomplished several things as a district over the course of this last year. We were rated excellent with distinction for the first time. There are only 138 out of 611 school districts in the state of Ohio that achieved that ranking. Kudos to our students, teachers, parents, and community. We met annual yearly progress. We are tasked with moving our students forward. We met that last year. Above growth value added metric. You may have heard in the news about the value added metric. Essentially, a student comes into the doors of our schools with a certain level of knowledge, a certain level of learning. It is our task to move them beyond that learning. Three things can happen. Below expected growth, expected growth, above expected growth, which means we moved our students further over the course of the year than is expected, a very good thing. Performance index of 103, that puts us as the fourth highest performance index out of 14 schools in Lorain County, very impressive. 147th of the 610 in the state of Ohio, again, a very impressive mark. Firelands High School had several accomplishments over the course of the year. For the ninth consecutive year, Firelands High School was rated excellent. We had a college and career readiness day earlier this year where seniors visited colleges or did job shadowing, which really plays onto the new expectations of the Common Core of either college or career readiness. Our juniors took the pre-ACT to give us a better idea of where they fall on the ACT and what areas we can help them in for the ACT the following year. Our sophomores took the plan test, another test that allows us to identify strengths, identify weaknesses, and help in each of those areas. Our freshmen, college and career speakers, we are now tasked with giving kids options. We are going to steer them down the path that best meets their needs. Students participated in fundraisers, fundraisers excuse me, for community service. We have high school students who tutor fourth and fifth, fifth grade students. This is a program that's funded through Amherst Rotary as well as the SOS Foundation. 
Violence High School organized and held a candlelight vigil to support Mr. Muth, one of our social studies teachers who was in an accident. We continue to do things to try to support the family. Numerous art awards and recognitions throughout the year. We have a very strong art program. Our data from the high school was reviewed based on a public survey to determine are there ways that we can better serve our high school students. We try to pull the students into the fold and ask them, what are your expectations of the high school? What can we do better? Team Leadership Corps, it develops leaders through community service. In addition, classes, dual credit classes were added this year. American National Government, next year we plan to add anatomy and physiology through the Lane County Community College. And essentially what dual credit courses enable us to do is allow students to gain college credits while still in high school at no cost to them. One of my philosophical visions is to have our students who are going to choose to move to post-secondary secondary education to leave our schools with a minimum of 10 college credits. That's quite a start for people and quite a bit of money that doesn't have to come out of the parents' pockets, <laughs> which is always a good thing. Firelands High School, our FFA, as many of you know, is state renowned. One of the things that they accomplished this year was they received a grant to teach some of our FHS students as well as FFA officers from other schools about families struggling with hunger, a real recognition piece. They were responsible for replacing recycling containers around the high school for plastics and aluminum, another show of community support. Strive, which is sponsored by the Oberlin Rotary, provides career speakers each month to 16 seniors. As a matter of fact, we had scholarships awarded through that program last year. Our choir received a Superior Radiant State Contest last April, and as a matter of fact, several, actually I believe they received a Superior at the Solo and Ensemble of the County Contest that just occurred. Hopefully we'll do the same thing at State next year. Athletic programs have really uh, been successful here this past winter season. Girls basketball team won the conference. Dave Cadella, Lorraine County Coach of the Year. Several players represented on the Lorraine County team. Our boys team, new coach Brett Bartlett, Lorraine County Coach of the Year. Several players represented on the Lorraine County team as well as another first place conference. We are attempting to hit all areas of society to make our students successful. Arts, Academics, Athletics, the three A's. South Amherst Middle School rated excellent with distinction for the second consecutive year. Kudos to them. Math Counts, we received a gold ranking for the second consecutive year, one of 11 schools in the state to receive that. Two of our art students received a gold key in the Scholastic Art Awards program. 46th graders, participated in the Cavs Read to Achieve program. We do try to stress reading. 24 students participated in the Lorraine County Solo and Ensemble contest, nine of them earning superior ratings. Two science teachers this year participated in the Ohio Energy Project over the summer. Essentially, SAMS was awarded 300 energy conservation bags. We gave them to the board members. We took some from the board office and the rest went home to students. They contain things such as energy saving light bulbs, um, kits that determine how much water usage occurred during your shower, really community minded things to help teach our kids about conservation. Our seventh and eighth grade bands earned the highest rating of one or superior at the Ohio Music Educators Middle School large group adjudicated event. It's quite the event just by the title, as you can tell. Ten students received a superior rating, and one student earned an excellent rating at the Lorraine County Stolen Ensemble Contest as well. South Amherst continues. Our eighth grade students participated in Mock Trial. Very neat event through Mrs. Post, I believe, correct, Mr. Spagnola? They got to actually go down to the courthouse. We have a great picture on the website of them standing with one of the judges in the chambers. Very good experience for them. Received grants for sixth grade students to participate in activities hosted by the Great Lakes Theater Company workshop. 
Our sixth graders received service grants for $500 from the Community Foundation, and with that, they were able to create Thanksgiving meals that were given to needy Firelands residents. Endowment grants the middle school totaled over $10,000 for the 12-13 school year. For those of you not familiar, our endowment board essentially awards teachers grants each year for innovative classroom ideas. Great, great things. Firelands Elementary rated excellent. 43 fourth and fifth grade students attended after school math tutoring twice a week, going back to the SOS program that we spoke of earlier. Funds were secured through our PTG, and I have to say kudos and thank you to our PTG. If you look out back, we have a new playground. We held a build a day. We have age appropriate equipment out there. We have a top notch playground now. The PTG also provides thousands of dollars to teachers and students in support and implementation of the new Common Core standards, which is a hot topic, as I spoke of earlier. The PTG also provides thousands of dollars to teachers and students in support and implementation of the new Common Core standards, which is a hot topic, as I spoke of earlier. Implementation of the new Common Core standards, which is a hot topic, as I spoke of earlier. The implementation of Ohio third grade reading guarantee has been quite a task this year. Our elementary has stepped up and done a fantastic job. We are showing great growth in our students who are identified as having areas of weakness. We partnered with Tolson Dyslexia to provide teachers with training in multi-sensory structured language approach to teaching reading. This was something new for Firearms and it is paying great dividends. Our PTG held a successful book drive, again, thank you to our PTG, to enhance our classroom libraries. Reading is a very important <coughs> thing for all of us, as you can tell from the third grade reading guarantee. We allow our students to read silently each day at their independent reading level, which is very important. And then we have additional books now through this drive to provide them with additional text selection. Several accomplishments over the facilities over the course of the past year. We installed Tectum Tile. If you look around here, those white sheets on the walls, if those were not up there, we would sound something like this during the course, during, sorry, during the course of this meeting. These tiles are phenomenal. If you've never been in a gymnasium or cafeteria as this serves with 150 first graders, you will understand why these Tectum Tiles are so important. We installed new mag locks um, at FES for the SAFE program right out here in these doors. Installed, installed pre-owned bleachers at SAMS to replace our old unsafe bleachers. So if you visit SAMS, you'll notice that we have new bleachers on both sides of the gymnasium. New used bleachers, but new to us and they're fantastic. We replaced door locks at SAMS. With SAMS being built in 1910, many of the door locks you had to step outside the classroom to actually lock them. For safety purposes, we installed locks that teachers are now able to lock from the inside. We patched the high school parking lot. You can tell it's a little smoother out there. Installed new lockers at the high school in the north end. Renovated the JV baseball field. Painted the bus garage. Installed a new window for energy efficiency. We are planning at this point for roof maintenance. Reconditioning, hopefully, of the SAMS in high school, gymnasium floors. Patchwork to the drive at SAMS this winter has taken its toll on the drive. Installed new restroom stall doors at the high school. Installed a security door, or we are in the process of installing a security door in the stairwell of Firelands High School. As many of you know, as you visit the high school, there's a stairwell off to the right. The security door will lock down the school and any visitor will have to walk through the main office prior to entering the building. We are installing a high efficiency combi oven unit at Firelands High School over spring break. This unit will not only improve taste and quality of food, but it will also allow us to be more efficient in our operations. Several things have happened to the Firelands schools over the past 10 years. Our enrollment has declined. Mr. McCracken will hit on this a little bit more, but if you look at the chart here, the red area for each grade level, K through 12, 
our district residents. The blue area on the top, and I'm not sure if you can see the numbers back there, are the open enrollment students. We moved to full open enrollment two years ago, three years ago, two years ago, which is keeping us afloat. We as a district have shown to those outside of our district that this is an excellent district, that we provide an excellent education, and we are able to draw students in to ensure that our enrollment continues to stay at a stable level. We're still shrinking. As you can see from this graph, this is a district enrollment. If you look back to June of 2006, we had 1,997 district students, 102 open enrollment. Fast forward to February of 2013, we now have 1,588 district students, a decline of almost 500 students. To keep that number stable for us in terms of state funding, the open enrollment number is now 244. Our enrollment will shrink again next year. We will continue to excel as a district and become desirable to open enrollment students to continue to ensure that our funding is stable and we are able to provide the education that our students deserve. With that, I will turn it over to Mr. McCracken. He will speak to our finances and what position we are currently in. Mr. McCracken.